Welcome home. How was work? Same as usual. You look tired. Are you all right? I'm fine. Oh yes, I got a fantastic present from Mr. Anderson's wife. Look at these, honey. Two invitations. A three-day stay at an old castle. Won't that be wonderful? Dick already told me. Gave me some time off for it too. Well, if you aren't too tired, I'd like to go myself. What do you think? If you're going, then I'm going. I'll tell our travel agent. Thanks, honey. I can't wait. I've got some work to take care of. Go to bed without me. Night. Good night. Ah, the bearings? I've been waiting for you. I'm Stevie Small, the tour conductor. I'll be your guide for this tour. Thanks. Now that you two are here, all the attendees are present. Please come aboard. We'll be leaving in roughly 30 minutes. Wow, what a ship! The five-hour trip to the island should go by in no time. I'm going to go introduce myself to the others. What about you? I'll head out later. You go in ahead. All right. Keith, this is Shirley. Keith, nice to meet you. I'm Shirley Weber. Same. She came here with her husband. Oh yes, where is he now? He told me he went to take a smoke, so he might be up on the deck. The tea here is delicious. You like tea? Absolutely. What about you? Sorry, I can't stand the stuff. Oh my gosh! Look at the size of that! It's fantastic! It really is! I can't wait to take a look inside. Keith, look! The view is so wonderful from here! It's like we're back in Europe! You remember when we went to France and you... Shouldn't you answer that? It's Eric, no doubt. I'll call him back later. I wonder what the others are up to. I'll go take a look. Are you coming, honey? Not right now. Later. <sighs> Lost again. You're awful at this. It's getting a bit boring. No, you're just too good. Your poker face especially. Yeah, it probably doesn't help that you're grinning or grimacing at every hand. Am I right or what, Helena? <laughs> it's really quite cute, though. How about playing poker with us, honey? Nah, I'm fine. Pardon me. You can have the rest of it. You won't be having any more? No. Gosh, Mr. Keith never smiles. What's got him in a tizzy? He's always that way. <laughs> what is he, a robot? <laughs> a robot detective? So he's Robocop! Don't be rude. Ah, uh, Robocop. I remember going to see that with my wife back in college. He may be that way now, but he used to be very funny, you know. He was always making me laugh. I told him he should consider being a comedian. Really? 
I don't believe it. K Keith, you took your call? Yeah. S sorry for for going back without you. I wanted to take a sh shower. Uh, uh, I'm going to bed now. Good night. Why were you crying? Sit down. I want to talk for a bit. I wanted to tell you this once we got back from this trip, but it's too hard for me. We're at a very important crossroads, a kind of D-Day. D-Day? For a decision, I guess, or a divorce. I've been thinking about it for a long time, but I couldn't say it. Want a divorce? Do you hate me? No, that's not it. No, I could hate you. It's not that. It's not you. It's a problem with me. With you? I'm going to bed. Well, I'll finish this conversation when we get home. Good night. I love you. Helena. Keith? Keith, are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm fine. What about you? Keith, Keith. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Helena, your leg's wounded. Hold on, I'll get over there. Keith, I'm fine. I'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Helena? Wait, Helena, I'll be right there. Don't move from that spot. I'm fine. I swear. I'll be fine. Wait for me, Keith. I'll... Don't worry. I'll... Ellen.
Oh, it's Sophie. Is something the matter? Why did you marry Mr. Keith, Helena? Why do you ask that? Lately, I felt like my heart doesn't ever beat fast anymore. I can think people are great and all, but that's it. I can't get excited about them like I used to. It's like I forgot how to love. David and Shirley get along really well, so I'm jealous. And I don't want to be by myself forever. So I'd like to know why you and Mr. Keith decided to get together, Helena. You know, love is like a jewel. It's buried deep in a person's heart. And one day, you just dig it up. Feelings like love and sympathy can create all different kinds of jewels. So jealousy, anger, and pride can shatter them too. Have you ever found such a jewel? Yeah, but I got rejected. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll find it again. I hope you can make a wonderful jewel someday. So what's your jewel like, Helena? Mine is already complete. I don't want to meddle with it anymore. I just want to keep it deep in my heart. It's so windy. <laughs> your hair's a mess, young lady. We should get back inside. Keith, my poor darling. You watched me as I wallowed in the depths of despair. And there you stood with your back against the edge. Now, it's time that you finally learn. You need pride. You need peace. So go ahead. Take it all. But don't you see? In the end, there will be nothing left of you. Uh, where is this? Who are you? What's going on? Hello, Miss Baring. Who? Call me Boogie, ma'am. I'm about to begin a game befitting such a joyful night. I'd appreciate your participation as well. Run from me, miss. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean. Where's my husband? Where am I? Why is that man tied up? Ah, he's an assistant. He can quickly explain to you how this will all work. If I should catch you, this happens. <laughs> Understand the rules now? Where's my husband? Somewhere you wouldn't know about. Where's my husband? He can't save you. He's in my grasp. It's up to me if he lives or dies. Now run, Miss Bayring. The game begins, and I am it.
So, I was on the inside of the cell. Mr. Baring, sorry to have called you. Your wife said she couldn't look, but we need you to confirm. It's my son. Are you sure? He's wearing the clothes from this morning. My wife sewed his name on then. Todd Baring. Check behind the neck. You have my deepest condolences. Sign here. We'll send you a pamphlet for a mortician. Refer to it if you wish. Thank you. There's a nurse waiting outside. Tell them if you need any help. Now, please excuse me. Helen. It's me. Hey, Keith, you off loitering somewhere? You gotta hurry. The suspect's on the move. Head for Wellington Street. Got it? Don't go. Stay with me. Helena, please don't leave without telling me. It makes me worry. It's been a year now. You always stayed with me. You always supported me. But I can't do it. I can't stop the tears. You got back on your feet. But I... I can't do anything but cling to you but i can't drag you down with my weakness anymore so you know what i thought when i saw his body i thought i failed can you believe that that a parent would think that after losing a child but it's true Everyone has one leg in a coffin. If they aren't careful, they can easily fall in. No exceptions. I should have known that. But I didn't. I prayed that my family would be an exception. I wanted them to be there smiling at me forever. When I saw him in the hospital, something died in me. I wanted to kill the one who took my son from me. And you know, some people smile about the deaths of others. I lost all hesitation to punish those people. I thought if they were gone, it would all end. But it'll never end. I still hear someone scoffing at me, saying, You couldn't even protect your own son. It's not your fault. That's what they all say. No! It's what I really think. Then what should I have done? I always felt like such a clown. He died while I was out running around, trying to save others, so the audience just points at me and laughs. I didn't know anything anymore. Why I smiled. Why I cried. Why I got angry. 
I forgot how I even expressed those things. Even when I saw him dead, I didn't cry. Now it's just you. You're all I have left. I'll keep praying for a sunny day, and until then, I'll be your umbrella. Who will keep you from getting wet? I don't care if I get wet. Helena, if you give up on me someday, then I want you to just forget about me. But please, for my sake, don't leave me alone. Don't cry, Keith. I never cry. No, you're crying. You've always been crying. I'm sorry for hushing my complaints on you. I'll get stronger so I can protect you. Whatever happens, you're someone I never want to lose. At last, I finally got a hold of you. Oh dear, hurt all over. But what else could I do? You just wouldn't stop running, miss, no matter how much I hurt you. But ah well, our game of tags come to a close now. Yes, you can't outrun the scary, scary boogeyman. Are you relieved it's over, or are you still scared? Well, madam, do you want to run? You're an unbelievable idiot. Say again. I called you an idiot. You thought I was running because I was scared. You think I'm scared of you? Maybe you've spent too long in your little closet world to understand. You've convinced yourself that women and children are all scared of you. What were you planning once they caught me? Kill me? And then what? You'd go to kill Keith, right? You told me you had Keith in your hands. Whether he'd live... Or die was up to me. I guess that was true. And all this time you've been foolishly chasing after me. You could never kill him. I'm weak. I can't be as strong as Keith is. But there is something I can do in all my weakness. If I can keep your attention away from Keith by running all the time, I'll run to the ends of the earth. You poor, stupid little boogeyman. You really are such a child. You just love bullying anyone weaker than you. Go ahead. Have fun in your little world. Call yourself a villain, a monster. But I'll never let you bring my husband into it. Don't you dare lay a hand on him! You talk too much, madam. Th that's terrible. Let's hurry and look for Helena. She must be nearby. Keith? Keith! What are you doing? We have to hurry. Keith, are you listening? Hey, what are you staring at? Are you asleep? Get a grip! Come on! I'm awake. David, you look for Helena. She should be near. Huh? What about you? What are you going to do? 
I'm going to go kill a monster. Helena! David! Are you okay? I... that man knocked me out. I woke up here. I was unconscious the whole time. Keith! Helena! Keith! Where are you? Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move better than you. What's in that big head of yours? Brendan? You lose. Detective. You're Brendan? Why? Stop moving around! Keith! Helena! We have to stop the bleeding. Lids! Richard, help me out! S sophie find something to tie him with. Keith! <laughs> Got you. Keith? You... Helena, when we get home, let's finish our conversation. No more running. No! Keith, stay with me, please! When our son died, I thought my own life was over too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come anyway. I don't remember anything about what I did back then. But I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wheeled and shouted. He'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without our son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been broken, and so had Keith. Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. He was always supporting me, so he never faced up to himself. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him, since I wanted him to laugh again. I couldn't. I... I couldn't repeat anything to Keith. And I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. So, even if we're far apart, as long as he can laugh again, then that's the best choice I can make. My wife always brings me more milk before I go to bed. And last Farmer's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. I definitely don't need milk to get to sleep. And the kids cooking, 
And I'll be blunt, it ain't good. But I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys, I've got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can fight day after day, because he knows you're waiting at home, as much as I tease him about it. Don't think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants, too. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled, even though he was stabbed and wounded. And what do you say? Got you. Because he finally got what makes him happiest. But, man, too much discrepancy between your guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to their department? Hey, Helena, he went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk with him now? I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there is a place he's going to visit. And I'm planning to head there myself. Keith. I've always wanted to cry like this. I never forgot about him. Not for a single day. Ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing, like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I might be able to fool everyone, even myself. It was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage, but I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. And I saw you were safe, and you came up to me. Finally, I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever, because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm going to laugh, even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad. And if I'm sad, I'll cry. First, I guess they'll have to be counseling. There's something seriously wrong with my head, it seems like. It's going to be a busy time. It's going to be so busy, I won't be able to do it alone. Helena, I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide. I've decided. Haven't you too? We only ever have one umbrella. So... We hold it together. And it's fine if we get a little wet, because... It'll soon be sunny again.
Oh, dear. Now I've done it. I thought I'd get the drop on you, but you're always going off somewhere or another, so I couldn't keep up. What an awful curtain closer. But hey, that's how it goes. I've done a lot of harm murdering, and you've done a lot of harm protecting. Life doesn't always go the way you want it, don't you know? Detective, can I ask a question? Who took away the stairs? Keith! Keith! Helena! <sighs> Where'd they get to? Those guys okay? Helena. Keith? Keith, thank God. I'm so glad you're alive. Keith, you're hurt. Really hurt. Let me see. Are you okay? This is nothing, but you. It doesn't hurt at all. It's just... I was so scared. I thought you might vanish in front of me, too. I'm sorry. Sorry. I couldn't protect you. Keith. Let's continue our conversation. I'm gonna go with D, the bad one. Give me a week. I'll pack my bags. No, I'll leave. You should stay there. You don't want to let go of the house, do you? All the memories there. A week from now, let's do dinner. I want to talk about some last things. A lot of them. Okay. I want that too. No more beer for you? Yeah. I get sleepy if I drink too much. I'll take you home tonight, so you don't have to worry about that. No, it's fine. I need to be capable of going home alone, even if I'm drunk. Hey, do you remember this? One time, after having a lot to drink, you came home with all this food. And when you got home, you started cooking all of a sudden. I just stared in disbelief while you cooked without a word. Then you said, Okay, eat up, good night, and fell asleep. Did that really happen? <laughs> of course. I couldn't eat it all, so I gave it to you in the morning. And you said, oh, Wow, luxurious. Did you make that in advance? 
you didn't remember it at all. Gosh, I laughed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> if you think that's funny, I shouldn't tell you what I got up to as a drunk student. You laughed yourself to death. I haven't seen you laugh in... forever. Really? If you can smile like that, then I don't need anything else. Not even me being with you? Sorry, I'll stop. Don't cry, Helena. I want our last meeting to be a fun one. Right. Keith, it's your phone. Peace. Don't answer it. We are unable to take your call at the moment. Please leave your name, number, and a brief message, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Keith, what the hell are you thinking? How can you resign and not tell me about it? I want to talk. Please, call me back ASAP. I'm waiting. A message from Mr. Anderson? So he called the home phone too. Oh, you surprised me. Where were you? Couldn't sleep, though I thought I'd have a drink. Sorry I woke you. Though there was a bottle of spirits in here. Where'd that go? Oh, it's in those drawers. Keith? Helena, you should stay in this house. Todd is here, and so am I. This house was like a box full of treasures to me. Treasures more valuable than life itself. I wanted to protect them at all costs. But I wasn't strong enough. I couldn't protect them. Not Todd, not you. And yet, even knowing my powerlessness, I couldn't let things go. If you're ever born again, I'll pray you never meet me. Who are you? I'm not anyone, detective.
looks like you did things out of order, detective. But still, not bad. Helena? David, where's Keith? We came here together earlier, then we split up. He must be that way. Let's go look for him. Keith! Keith! Please, Keith, get up! Don't move him, Helena. Uh, uh, first we need to stop the bleeding. <sighs> Helena, are you there? I am. It's okay, Keith. We'll stop the bleeding. I can't see. Blood in my eyes. Helena, you there? No. Please, Keith, please. Hold on. Please. Don't leave me. You're the only one I can't lose. Helena? Helena? What's wrong? Huh? You were crying. Have a bad dream? I had... an awful dream. What was it like? I don't want to remember it. Helena, you need to wake up soon. I want to sleep a little longer. Wake up, Helena. The bad dreams are always the real ones. Were you asleep, Helena? I was dreaming. What kind of dream? A happy dream. Good. I'm glad you can get some sleep. Do you think you can eat anything? I'm done cleaning the storeroom, so I thought I'd make you something. I'm not hungry. You need to eat, Helena. It's not healthy. I'll make you something simple. Thanks for your help, Shirley, but it's fine. You don't have to do anything. I'm just glad you came. If you can get to sleep, then maybe you should sleep. But isn't it chilly by the window? Come to the bedroom. I want to be here right now. It's my favorite place. I always like to see my son coming home from kindergarten, or Keith coming home from work. This must be a great place then. Helena, you remind me of a friend of mine. She got along really well with her husband. So, when her husband left, she was very depressed. She told me that her son's support helped her get her back on her feet. She was a really good person. When I was introduced to her, she told me she was glad to have a daughter-in-law. But I didn't know much about becoming anyone's family. I thought, if my parents threw me away, how could I ever be a part of a stranger's family? And she noticed my worry. So she told me this. While I had an unhappy marriage, through it, I met my beloved son. But not everyone can have such happy meetings. So, if you're unsure, I won't mind if you run away. Ultimately, I let anxiety get the best of me and I ran. 
and by the time I resolved to come back, she was already gone. I still regret my cowardice, but I know it's too late. David seemed to think that you and Keith didn't get along, but I never thought that for a second. You were always so concerned for Keith, and Keith always sounded kind when he spoke to you. I knew you must have really valued each other. I thought I'd like to be like that myself, but it's not so easy. I still don't know how to go about it. I'm sure you just need lots of wonderful memories. It's okay, Shirley. You two will be just fine. Thanks. Why do the people so close to you always have to go so soon? H Helena, sorry, uh, I was cleaning the living room and I and I broke something. Uh, uh, hold on, what did you break? Uh, a glass cat? Y you broke a Swarovski ornament! What are you doing? That's why I said I should clean the storeroom. You know I'm clumsy. There's even more stuff in there! That would be a disaster! S say what? <laughs> You two are just too adorable. There's nothing to worry about, Shirley. You're a wonderful pair. I know you'll get on fine. I don't want any more bad dreams. I'm exhausted. I just want to have happy dreams. Helena! No! No, please! Helena. 